So uh, that's me. Uh, I don't know how many years ago. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have been a, a Linux user since 2000. Uh, I've engaged with the, the Ubuntu community pretty early on, uh, but I only got s very strongly involved, um, I would say, in 2015, 2016. Uh, I was still involved, but uh, periodically and uh, with some peaks of involvement and stuff like that. Uh, I've been a Ubuntu podcaster, with just well, not just a podcaster, an Ubuntu podcaster, uh, since 2017. Uh, I started a podcast with my friend Tiago, which is now uh, ma uh, doing the moderation in the ballroom. Um, then a few other people joined, some left, but we have been going strong since then. Uh, I am also involved with the UbiPorts Foundation, I was an Ubuntu phone user pretty early on, and uh, I decided that I also wanted to give something back. Uh, so uh, I joined uh, the community and then the foundation. I, I am a membership committee uh, member there, uh, which basically is the same as the Ubuntu membership uh, committee. Uh, it's the equivalent to basically decide who is officially uh, um, a member. Uh, in the case of the foundation, there's more legal implications there because the members of the foundation actually are the owners of the foundation. Uh, but uh, besides that, it's pretty much the same thing. I've became a uh, Ubuntu member in 2021, so not, not very long ago. And uh, uh, as a profession, I'm, I was, have been a developer, uh, an environment, a development environment specialist, uh, a stizzardman, and uh, now I'm a DevOps. Oopsie. <laughs> because, yeah, sometimes that's what happens. Uh, yeah, I, I'm also involved for a very long time with uh, the free software community in Portugal. Uh, I've been a member of the Portuguese Association, also involved with the Portuguese Digital Rights Association. So I've been promoting the, this type of values for a very long time, since 2001, I think. And uh, that's pretty much a big part of what I am. Uh, does it work? It doesn't. So, oh, just use my... So why am I doing this presentation? Uh, I want to give you the inspiration to go back to your countries and uh, start reorganizing the c local communities. Uh, because they were a big thing until, I'll say, 15, 2015. And after that, they died off. Um, there, were, there have many, been many reasons, uh, some uh, because uh, Canonical lost a little, little bit of focus there. Uh, in supporting the, the local communities. The local community council also uh, uh, stagnated for a while, and the, the, the communities themselves also uh, got a little bit less involved locally and more globally. Uh, so there was several things going on. Uh, it also a bit, uh, it was a bit trouble time uh, when uh, Ubuntu had some uh, image uh, uh, problems there regarding the Amazon thing, stuff like that. So, yeah, lots of, thing, uh, lots of things uh, contributed to that. But I also want to get some inspiration from you guys because uh, we are not perfect. We don't always do the things the best way. We don't always have the best ideas. Uh, so uh, I want to do what we do best, which is to steal ideas. Uh, and I want to convince you to give the, give it to me. Uh, that's uh, I'm a scammer. <laughs> so, so, uh, but why the the local communities? Um, because uh, the best way for us to uh, to actually do what Ubuntu uh, wants to do to take the Ubuntu and free software to the widest audience is not just to act uh, globally, but that's necessary because we need to collaborate with people from all over the world to do the software, to do all the things we do at scale. Um, but we also need to be able to uh, drill down and go to, to our countries and understand better what the people there need, uh, their own cultural uh, specificities, create special needs, uh, 
the, the even the tech environment uh, you'll see uh, as specific things, and uh, that uh, that creates the need for local action. And so this is pretty much the same. So uh, what do we do in Portugal, uh, in sunny Portugal? Because uh, we have, I think, almost 40% of, of our year, we have sun. It's a pretty big chunk. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So what we do there, uh, besides going to the beach and uh, or to the pool or whatever. Uh, we do a lot, you'll see. We are a very old country. Uh, we have pretty much 900 years of history uh, as a country. Uh, and the Ubuntu community is not that old, but uh, it's quite old. Uh, it, uh, it was actually one of the first uh, Ubuntu communities uh, to, to actually be created. So we are not the oldest, I think. Uh, we are not the better. The best, uh, and uh, but we are really proud of what we did so far. I think we did some cool things because we are not that many, and we did at least as much in some uh, fields that, that the biggest communities like the French and the German actually did. So we are very proud of that. Uh, it was founded by these two guys, Jean Cruz and Paulo Trigue Silva. It was pretty early on, as you can see, uh, pretty much. Uh, after the, the release of the first Ubuntu version. And this was the foundation of the community and the official, became official part of, uh, of Ubuntu, uh, recognized by the council uh, a few months later. So it didn't take too much to, for us to organize and to start uh, trying to have a consistent uh, uh, action. So, but uh, why did we do this? Because, yeah, we want to, to spread Ubuntu and free software. Uh, we want people to know about it. We want to, that people benefit from it. Uh, and not just individuals, but the societies. And uh, uh, we also want to bring our own specificity, our own uh, richness uh, to Ubuntu. Uh, so not only that the other users can benefit from it, the other Ubuntu users, but especially the people that speak Portuguese, which are quite a few million, because Brazilians are a lot. Uh, Angolans are also not few, Mozambicans. Uh, Guinea also speaks Portuguese. Well, there are few countries speaking Portuguese. So others will benefit from, from what we do, even if they are not there with us. Uh, but so, uh, how do how do we create the community? Uh, we try to get a group and get to know each other rather well. Uh, sometimes we become friends. Sometimes we just build trust relationships. It's all okay. Uh, we don't all have to be the closest friends possible. But uh, usually, it uh, ends up in friendship. And sometimes uh, we. Our events just happen because we are friends, uh, and yeah, and we have to keep the spice flowing. We have to keep the, the events. Uh, uh, this is very important. If you break uh, for a very long time uh, the activities, people will go away, uh, and uh, we we have seen that when regularity uh, stops, uh, it's hard to come back. Um, so. We also build relations with other communities in Portugal, uh, with other free software communities, with Wikimedia and stuff like that, and with entities, uh, universities, schools, all types of entities, uh, museums. Uh, this is vital to, for us to be able to carry our mission. And, uh, and we embed with them. Uh, we, they join us in our activities, and we join on their activities. Uh, Ubuntu is an operating system. We also provide other software, but software by itself is not that useful if we don't use it to do something. And people usually care about software because they want to do something with the software. So uh, we incentivize as much as we can uh, people to, to, to try Ubuntu uh, and to try to do their activities using Ubuntu. Um, and we try to learn from them what they do 
because we also benefit from learning from them. And, and it also enlightens us a bit uh, about uh, the needs from users uh, so that we can include that feedback from, for our contributions. So communication is very important within our community. Um, we have had newsletters, we have had IRC groups, we have had lots of, of, of uh, communication uh, mechanisms, um, even a podcast. <laughs> Uh, uh, but this is important to communicate internally as it is to broadcast uh, what you do uh, outside so that you can expand the community and just let other people know about Ubuntu and uh, that there is people like them, uh, li like every sort of pe person, uh, no matter what level of knowledge they have about uh, technology, uh, and that they can join us and learn with us and benefit from the software. So what do we do exactly? Um, we do several types of activities. Uh, translations is one. Tech support is another. Uh, we, we create learning materials. Uh, you'll see a bit more about that. We redistribute Ubuntu. Uh, we, we tell people about Ubuntu. We are not as nagging as the Arch guys, but we try to be a little bit. Uh, we organize events. Events might be the most important thing because they allow us to do all these types of activities and they allow us to socialize, which, as, as I said before, the social part, the friendship, the trust relationship, all those things are vital for, for our community. That's what allows us to do everything else. So translations. Um, translations, that's, I think, the first activity we we started doing after support uh, because people immediately went to the mailing list asking for help now, how to do this and how to do that. Um, and not everybody knew um, English uh, at this point in Portugal. Most people know English, but uh, a few years ago it was not that much. Uh, so translation became vital for spreading knowledge about Ubuntu uh, and it was for a core group of us, quite easy to get started. Uh, so we started doing translations. We started as early as March 2005. Uh, we, we created our own tools to support our activities, like uh, memory uh, of the translations, so that we have consistency through all, all the things that we translate. And recently, we also started contributing to upstream projects like uh, Nextcloud and others, uh, so that uh, we can benefit from the translations done there uh, to be more accurate and all those things. The support. Um, yeah, that, that was, as I said, the first thing we did. There were a few specific things for Portugal besides all the general things that users ask around no matter what. Uh, and there was um, the the need to connect to, the, to the, the computers to the internet using the modems that the, the ISPs provided. Um, they often did not work out of the box or at all. <laughs> and there was the need to use the, the application from the tax authority to submit the tax data. And uh, often <laughs> was complicated because uh, they did not make our life easy and uh, the Java application not always worked very well. And so, this type of specific work is, I think, uh, some of the work that local communities can help uh, users. If the local community can actually do support, sometimes can do other things, but not support. So, but uh, our managed to do that. Uh, we also teach to to how we solve our own problems. So we are also at problems. So even the people that know things have their own needs and the their own problems, and we we started having a, a document uh, that kept the memory of how we solved those problems. Later, it turned out in, to become something else, uh, uh, but uh, I'll go into that later. So, it, teaching how to do configurations, teaching how to install, all those things were part of our support activities. Uh, the documentation. Also, uh, something necessary. Uh, we translated a lot. We created uh, that that type of memory that, that 
later was restructured into, restructured into a document. Um, we, we looked specifically to, to look into the specific needs of our community in Portugal because there were other resources online uh, and we were already translating also some of them. So and on the new documents that we were writing, we focused on the specific needs of the Portuguese people. You might, if you maybe remember this, this was the Ubuntu, Ubuntu guide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was a great uh, resource. Uh, these, uh, we translated it. Uh, we actually did a little margin just to translate. We localized it and uh, we added our own spin on it. Uh, and we integrated the, that memory of uh, problems that we solved into it and uh, uh, created uh, something, uh, a derivative work from the Ubuntu guide, uh, which was the gear ubuntupt.org. So it created by a few of our community members based on, the, the, on their own knowledge on, on the, that memory that we had before and on the Ubuntu guide. Uh, it had all these type of things uh, that you can see here, all very detailed things and just general things uh, from uh, how to optimize uh, uh, something or how to install Flash or it had all types of, of, uh, of uh, tips and tricks and uh, guides and uh, including for every specific version of, of Ubuntu that was released uh, while we we're still keeping this, uh, this guide. So this was key because it really made very simple for anybody to adopt Ubuntu. All the major issues that people found uh, while using Ubuntu, there was a recipe there that would allow them to immediately f uh, solve the issue. And the, the search engine optimization of it was really good at the time. So they could find it very easily on Google or somewhere else. And it was really popular. And I, I think this is what allowed us to grow in Portugal. Uh, because it was, I think, magical. <laughs> we learned magic incantations there. But it no longer exists. Um, it was killed. Uh, it was not killed by a vampire slayer, but uh, almost. <laughs> um, it, it, People got alive and they had to, to start doing something else and they were maintaining it and they forgot to pass it over to someone else and unfortunately it died away. Uh, it, it's not as needed as it was before, but I think this type of document uh, is still needed. Uh, specific needs of, of users in each country can be very uh, specific and, and uh, having a document that uh, guides them to, to how to solve them, uh, I think is very valuable. And, and if locals can get together and, and start working on this type of document, which is, I think, not so hard for advanced users to, to like uh, I think most of us that are here, um, I think this uh, is a good way to, to get uh, a community working on something initially and gather more people around and, and motivate them. But what we do more and better is this type of things, events. Uh, Meetups, jams, conference, workshops, all that kind of, kind of, kind of stuff. Uh, the first time we got together was in June uh, 2005. Uh, it was not uh, an Ubuntu PT event. It was a uh, Debian uh, release party. Uh, I was organizing it as part of the Portuguese National Association for Free Software. It, uh, we appeared three, <laughs> we were trees, so it was not a major su success, but, uh, but it was uh, the first time, uh, so not so bad. At least we did it. And, uh, but a few years later, uh, we were uh, uh, on this event, Forum Software Livre, uh, the Free Software Forum, organized by uh, one of the Portuguese uh, uh, technical colleges in Lisbon. Uh, and we were the only Linux distro there. Uh, 
we we managed to to be there. Uh, there were people there in the picture. You maybe not recognize, but there is the the at the time, the president of the Free Software Foundation Europe. He was there. Stallman was there. Uh, there were several people there, and it was a really great event. This was just before opening the fi the photo, but these were the, the Ubuntu community members there. They created a, a stand with the shape of the Ubuntu logo. You can see a little bit of it. Uh, and they had the computers there with Ubuntu. People could try it, and it was a major success. So there were hundreds of people there all the time, and uh, it was awesome. So we learned from our mistake. And a few years later, we were in another event using the same stand, uh, and a few more people were there. It was in a smaller city near Lisbon, uh, also with Free Software Foundation Europe, and with Ansal, which is the National uh, Association for Free Software, and several uh, open source companies that were uh, at the time there too. Then you may recognize this gentleman here. He's moderating the other room. Uh, this was around the time he joined. He, he was a teacher at this place, the, the professional center in Alcoitão. Um, there was a open week, and uh, those two guys from our community, they joined it, they had a stand there. Uh, and uh, it was our first collaboration with a non-college uh, uh, degree uh, uh, school. It repeated. We also went to the interior. This cyber center uh, is uh, uh, an event uh, in the interior of Portugal. Uh, it was uh, several uh, install fests that were at the time popular things, uh, and uh, we were everywhere. Uh, every, everywhere there was a, an install party or a LAN party, we were there. We were installing, people were liking and trying it, having conversations. Uh, it was something that we did, really popular. Um, this is, I think, some of the things that we can also still do in events, uh, there are still some types of community events for makers, uh, the maker fairs, all those types of, of events. This is something that communities, local communities can do still. Uh, this was back at that uh, technical uh, school that I mentioned before. It was the open day, uh, Ubuntu open day. It was joined with, uh, with the ACM uh, local chapter uh, of, that, of that school. It was an entire day of, uh, of um, presentations and, and uh, practical hands-on and experimentation and conversations with the students. It was uh, a really good event. Uh, it was the start of a very close uh, relation between us and the masters in open source that uh, that the college had. Uh, it was unique, I think. I don't know any other place that had a masters in open source. Uh, so it 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 was a, a real the really the the first event we did together, and this is the next event we did together, uh, which uh, we managed with the Portuguese Free Software Association and a few more entities. We did the Document Freedom Day uh, at that college, and and you cannot see, but this was a class we teach the class on that day, and then. We went, started went to Ubucons. Uh, this is the Portuguese representation in one of the Ubucon. Uh, this was in Spain, but we were in the first in Essen, then we were in Paris, then Chichon. And after that, we organized uh, an event with the, with the company and the city council and the National Association for Free Software. This was a, a big event, actually. We had the three days of, of talks, uh, uh, all types of talks, gaming, uh, uh, backups, uh, databases, uh, uh, Drupal management, uh, Wikipedia editing, all those types of things. It was a really big event. Um, and uh, it was the relaunch of, of, of an event that had the same name, but in a different year, uh, eight years before, that was immensely popular. They had thousands of people. This time we didn't have thousands of people, but uh, it was still a few hundred people there. And uh, then uh, 
we started participating in other people events. Uh, I went to Essen uh, to this uh, Secure Open Source Day, which was shared with the, the, the CMS Garden Conference. Uh, we, I gave a talk about Ubuntu security, a little bit in inter introduction to Ubuntu and Ubuntu security. And <coughs> then we did our first conference, Ubicon Portugal, which we also did in, uh, with that, uh, what, that masters in open source school. They, this relation kept through the time and uh, they, they helped us organize this. They gave us the, 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 the place to do the event. They gave some talks at the event and uh, they, they, they aptly host us frequently. And uh, we also invited other uh, free software and free software adjacent communities. This is also part of our strategy and to keep engaged with these communities. It enriches, it enriches them. And uh, it, it was an awesome event. It was uh, the preparation for the other event, the Ubicon Europe 2019, which uh, was, I think, the big, biggest of them all so far. I hope that we'll have a 2020, uh, 2023, uh, which is bigger, I hope, maybe in Greece, maybe in Italy, let's see. Uh, it, uh, it, it's basically a community organized event. Canonical is not involved. Uh, they sponsor, uh, but that's the, the, as much as involvement as they have. Uh, it had three official days with uh, four parallel tracks. Uh, it adds, uh, four more days of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, cultural activities and social uh, activities. And these were the ones that we organized officially because people started arriving even early and left later. So we were still hosting them and taking them to visit places, taking them to surf classes, to everywhere, we, really cool events. Um, often families uh, go and entire families uh, just take vacation, uh, have a few days of conference and do the social activities. Uh, we have had the pleasure to, to meet uh, many of the, the attendees' families. Uh, we also celebrated Ubuntu 15 years. It was a really big party in, uh, in the pub that we usually do our uh, social events. So our own events, well, we do several types of events. Uh, we do meetups, we do release parties. Most of them are social um, because th that's the glue for everything. Uh, we also do some tech support there. So people take a computer and I am having a problem, we will always help. Uh, but uh, hamburgers, beers and cake are the, the, our favorite things. <laughs> uh, we also tried to do online meetings. It had mixed results. Um, uh, meetings, these meetings worked for actually do work. Uh, organization of the loco, uh, planning for events. Uh, yeah, but the results were really mixed. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if we are going to do them again. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the events. Uh, Global Gems, who remembers the Global Gems? Yeah, these were cool events where the Ubuntu community all over the world joined to work on specific things. Uh, translations, Q&A, whatever. Uh, we used to do the, them all. Uh, we also did our own workshops uh, where people could try things hands on. Uh, sometimes we just did demos because people were not prepared to do the, the workshops. We also, did something very close to the, the workshops with our, the, the hours, we call them Ubuntu hour, uh, which is just usually just a demo or a, a presentation of some sort, but uh, almost always not by one of our community members. So we get someone from another community and go there to present something. Uh, and we'll see a few types of it. So uh, the workshops we did uh, on Ubuntu core, on Nextcloud, on the Nextcloud Snap uh, and Nextcloud Box, we have we had we did a group purchase of those, so we then joined everybody <laughs> in in a place and we teached everybody how to install and configure it. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, we also do some uh, testing sessions, and we teach how to. We actually did one specifically how to teach how to install Ubuntu 
1804. The Ubuntu hours um, that I said, which are not that f different from the workshops, uh, they, 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 our reference tech events, uh, even if they are not <laughs> about uh, Ubuntu often, uh, but they used to happen in Sintra. Uh, we lost the venue because it closed with COVID and never came back, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll get some solution So, uh, The type of topics were completely uh, all over the place, but uh, these type of things also make the community more interesting. Uh, it engages the other communities with ours and uh, allows us to have uh, some fun with different types of things that we are used to. Uh, we also try to do online meetups and workshops uh, when COVID started. Uh, we did uh, on one with uh, to teach basically how to, people how to start contributing to Ubuntu, uh, these type of things. Uh, signing into Launchpad, getting an account, signing the code of conduct, uh, how to use the single sign-on, we have the oh, we have the wiki, we have the, the Ask Ubuntu, we have all those types of things, and and the, tra the trans effects, all those types of tools that we need to for you to get started contributing to Ubuntu. It, we guide, guided people through them, and uh, then we tried to exploit that on the following workshops. We also played a lot of uh, SuperTux Kart. It's really popular. Uh, people always ask for it. And uh, we did uh, an introduction to translations. We did one uh, session with Monica for Ubuntu Mate, specifically. And uh, David uh, did uh, an introduction to Juju and Marsh. And uh, when, uh, I think one month before, before the Jammy Jellyfish, we did uh, a walkthrough of, uh, of Jammy. The social meetups, as I said, are the most important events we do. Uh, that's how we get, how we build the relations uh, between us all and allow us to get to know each other, know each other's strengths, uh, each other possibilities uh, to work with us. And, uh, and we mobilize the community with those type of events. Uh, we could never pull uh, Nubucon Europe uh, without having regular meetups. Uh, when we, the day before Ubicon Europe, uh, we didn't know how many volunteers would appear. We were afraid that we would not have uh, enough people to manage all the rooms. Uh, in the end, we got so many volunteers that we could not manage them all. Uh, <laughs> there were so many that, uh, fortunately we had t-shirts for all, but, uh, but uh, yeah, we, there were so many, uh, it was wonderful. That's something they really come through because uh, they got, we built their, the relationship with them. So they came and helped us a lot. Uh, so our f first social meeting was uh, parallel to, to this other event that I've talked before uh, in 2007. It was just dinner. Uh, and but uh, but our first regular events um, uh, were uh, at the, actually that was that's uh, that's wrong. This was the first event. <laughs> this was the first event, uh, which uh, it was uh, hosted by Internaya, which is was a company in Portugal that uh, was an open source company owned by one of our community members. Um, we got together. Uh, at the time uh, to experiment, to, to teach each other tips and tricks, all types of things, and then add dinner bef after that. And then we started doing, doing it regularly. Uh, we had uh, jams, we had dinners, we, we took the CDs and the DVDs to distribute to all those that appeared. Uh, I remember someone, uh, before an event just was on the street giving out CDs and DVDs uh, one, one of the times. Um, but 
the trick is that we did add a few interruptions, but uh, we did we had very few long interruptions between our um, events. Uh, in 2013, uh, we ended up the biggest in interruption we had since to mid 2012, I think, uh, by shifting our meetup place from Lisbon to Sintra. Uh, and since then, we missed once. And once in person and once online, so twice. And uh, the regularity is really important. I really have to, to, to repeat this a lot. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really key. Uh, people uh, will get used to having these meetings regularly. And not, not, uh, most people cannot go every time. But they know that there is a meeting next month. And they know that is on that specific day of the week of that month. Of in, in, of that week in the month, or they know that uh, at least it's a uh, Thursday in the month, something like that, and they they pay attention, they start planning their lives so that they can work around it and make and be able to go. They will not go every time, and sometimes we are twenty, sometimes we are more than that, sometimes we are two. Some I, I once I was one, <laughs> so it it what really takes is uh, us to be. Uh, to, to insist to 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 not stop do it, doing it, and uh, while I, uh, sometimes it was just me, sometimes it was just Tiago, um, and it's it's really important to keep the regularity. We had some attempts of doing in other places, so Lisbon and Sintra were the only places we had the regular meetings. Porto, Setúbal, Coimbra, those three cities tried to plan a lot of times, but never did it because they, oh, I cannot go, but you can, the other guy can, the other guy can, oh, but the other can't, oh, okay, so we do it another time. No, if you are two, go. <laughs> it's enough, uh, it's a good time because you likely share interests with that person and can have a good conversation, uh, maybe a beer, maybe something else, uh, and, and you get used to it and uh, you start having this regularity that is needed. We had also some kind of irregular uh, meetings uh, in Ericeira, sometimes in Lisbon after we abandoned Lisbon initially, in Caluj, and, and now we are doing it in the middle of the Atlantic in Ponta Delgada, which uh, it's a really cool place. So uh, remember, we'll never please everybody. Uh, they will always ask, can we do at their doorstep? Uh, oh yeah, no, I cannot, but you can. It's your doorstep. Uh, I will go. Uh, maybe I'll not go every time, but I will go there. Um, so, but you have to be your own leader. You, you have to 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 be the one that takes the effort to begin something where the community is not organizing, because you are the one that's there. So, uh, the mingling with the communities. We mingle with a lot of communities. Uh, this really enable us to grow a lot. Uh, not everybody on, in these communities have interest in Ubuntu, but uh, some of them will have. And the more uh, communities you mingle, the more people you'll get, and then they will contribute. Uh, because they are very much into do, doing something uh, with the technology, and uh, being able to define the technology they use is uh, often very important to them. We, we also did specific events to, in which we mingled with those communities, the Debian release party, uh, the free software forum, all these types of events. We also went to force them together as a community. Uh, we organized the Ubuntu commu uh, Portugal community, uh, Ubucon, uh, and we, I, I in particular, but not only me, uh, go often to the Ubuntu party in Paris, which is roughly every six months. Sometimes it's on the same release month as Ubuntu. Sometimes it's the month after. It depends on the availability of the museum that they use for the meetups, which is a really cool museum. It's uh, the Industry and Science Museum in Paris. I recommend everybody to go there. Uh, so having events where you 
work with the other communities and where you share the event with the other community is also important to, to, to be able to build this uh, trust and to let them know about Ubuntu, the, the advantages of using Ubuntu and free software, and you also learn from them. So this is also not a new idea, <laughs> mingling with the other communities. Other people have done it. Uh, we certainly uh, started doing it more intentionally after seeing other Ubuntu communities doing it. Uh, the French community, the German community, uh, all those other communities, even the UK Ubuntu community used to, to, to share the OCAMP event with other communities. Uh, so this is uh, the kind of thing that really works and it's uh, not new idea. Uh, so we imitate a lot. Uh, we have no shame in coping the best practices that other communities have. Uh, and I hope that uh, after today, uh, after this presentation, some of you can also give me ideas. Uh, I hope that I g gave you also some of them. So, or at least I've motivated you to do already something that you might have already in your mind to do. And this is something that uh, we just started recently. It's called the Linux Center. It's not a new idea, obviously. Uh, there have been uh, logs with uh, their own uh, space and sometimes with their own resources. Uh, computer clubs have also existed before. Uh, the Chaos Computer Club is something really big that m many people know. Uh, hacker spaces exist, maker spaces exist. There's even a, a Linux center in Spain uh, or created by Slimbook which is where often uh, KDE hackathons happen. Uh, and uh, yeah, we created a Linux center in, in Lisbon inside a makerspace uh, that is hosting us a few times. Uh, we, we have the material stored there and when we are organizing our events, we take it out and, and assemble it. So it, as I said, we have a computer lab uh, I donated the material to the, this, uh, this, um, this center, which is managed by me uh, as an effort by the, and the Ubuntu, Portuguese Ubuntu community. Um, it, uh, it promotes sharing knowledge and based on practical ex experience. Okay? We are not there just to teach theory. You can do that in any place or almost any place that, you, that is relatively quiet but not every place has a computer lab. So having a computer lab enables people to do experimentation, and that's uh, what we want to do there. Uh, so we lead it. Uh, the Ubuntu Portuguese Ubuntu community leads it, but it's open to all the free software and open source communities and all those that are adjacent. Uh, Wikimedia is likely one of the that is going to work with us a lot. Uh, the OpenStreetMap people also. Uh, we have a good. We have built all these relationships with these communities, as I showed you before, and uh, they are very interested in, in collaborating with us and organizing events there. Um, it was uh, inaugurated recently. Uh, I I decided that assembling the the lab for the first time would be the first event. Uh, so I, I wanted to, people to feel some sort of ownership over the project too. Participating in assembling it, I think it's a good way to to put them on that mental space where they feel that they are a part of it, that they have built it themselves. And uh, after that, we installed Ubuntu. Uh, we tried it out. Uh, it was the day, two days after the release, and we played a Super Tux card. <laughs> and some of us took the picture in the end of the event. Uh, well, not all of us stayed until the end. Others didn't want to appear in the picture, so... Some of us took the picture. So these are some of the events that uh, we have uh, in our list of possible events for the, the center. Uh, there are a few more uh, suggestions that people have made. I just didn't make, make the list even longer. But as you can see, there are things that are about Ubuntu and other things that are just technology or uh, uses of technology to achieve something else which is a lot 
of what uh, I have been telling you that today that we do and we do with the other communities. Um, if you guys have more ideas, if you guys want to go there and, and, and give some workshop, uh, we are all open to that type of things. It's a, we also can give you a guide to, tour guide to, to, to Lisbon, guided tour. So, but we have some challenges in our community. We did some things. I, I think we did some things right. Uh, we learned from others, but we still have some challenges in our community. Uh, and uh, leadership uh, continuity is one. At this point, is not uh, in cause because the current leaders are very committed still. But uh, we know that nobody lasts forever. Uh, not only we die, uh, but uh, we also live. And sometimes life takes us other places and uh, we lose our availability for this type of things. And uh, have kids, have horses, have whatever you rather. Um, and uh, you, the time for Ubuntu becomes scarce and uh, someone else has to step in. We do not see in our community nobody that is trying to, 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 to reach a position that, of possible leadership. This worries us and uh, we would like to know if any of you has any insights that could help us on that. Also, uh, in converting users to contributors, we have had some success, but not as much as we hoped for. Um, uh, we also have a massive uh, gender imbalance and all, the diverse, diversity within our community is not big. Um, and that is something that we are very worried also because we cannot be Linux for some human beings. We want to be for all. Uh, and we want them to contribute to defining the, the technology they want and need. And um, yeah, this is where I ask you, what should we do next uh, to, to maybe help us solve these problems? Or what should we do else? Because we might be do something of those things that are wrong. And I give you guys the word. Thank you. So there's a micro there, if you guys want. Anyone? OK. Yeah. So you said to convert users to contributors, right? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, how do you uh, sort of motivate, like, you're doing a lot of good work and it's great work. So how do you motivate uh, like a normal user to get into some sort of a Ubuntu membership sort of position hmm. uh, uh, within the EMEA membership board or something like that? Have you thought about it? Uh, I don't think there are many users in, within our community that aren't uh, member, Ubuntu member material that, uh, at this point. Uh, I'll, I'll, those that are on their path or would be on the path are already members. The others are still uh, s somehow far away because they do infrequent contributions. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, some of them, I don't know why, uh, don't appear to be motivated. Uh, there might be one or two that could be m uh, member material and they are not motivated to be. We already explained them uh, what, it in, what Ubuntu member is, uh, what, it, what are the benefits, what, but uh, they, they, don't, don't see, they, they don't see the, the advantage. And the, the fact is that there are no big advantages. Being an Ubuntu member is the recognition of something that you have already done. That's what they cared about. That's why they did it. And um, they don't feel like uh, being an Ubuntu member uh, and getting more involved uh, in leadership uh, either inside our group or in the wider Ubuntu community. And yeah, this is the type of things, that, <laughs> the, our ch challenges that we don't know what to do. 
like I have a uh, follow-up question to this. Yeah. Like, if you take the Portuguese and the Spanish community, right? It's like a huge ecosystem. Like, the Latin Americans also come. Other places also come. So, do you cross-reference sometimes, or do you cross-help those uh, Latin American communities when doing some things here, mm. or? No. We, we have talked about doing something with the Spanish because it's right next door. Uh, but at this point, they are not organized enough. We are friends with them, but uh, yeah, they need to sort their stuff. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, the Catalonians don't feel like being Spanish, the, the Asturian the same, and uh, so they, they don't have a, a strong national identity. And, uh, when someone decides that they want to be the the Spanish local leader, the others say you don't not you are not. Uh, so this is a problem, but we can individually work with them very well. We have good, great relationships with them, and even them between themselves, they are friends. But as soon as it talks about leadership, it, that that's the end of the conversation. Yeah. So why I asked is like Brazil also speaks Portuguese. Yes. Uh, so I was like, uh, uh, will you help uh, the Latin American things also? Yeah. Like we started having a, a relationship with the Brazilian community a very sh short time ago. Uh, we might have a longer relationship with Venezuelans and Colombians, uh, which have more organized communities. Uh, and uh, we, we haven't went there and they haven't come here yet. yet. Well, the Venezuelans have come to, to Ubicons. And uh, I know that there's a Colombian somewhere here. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we haven't been able to, to work with them. Uh, but we talk with them. Uh, we try to help them organizing the, uh, the uh, Ubicon Latin America uh, online uh, mm -hmm. when COVID started. Uh, it didn't went through, but uh, hopefully someday it will. And uh, yeah, uh, our language is close enough to Spanish and for us to understand them, so it makes it easier to work with them. Hopefully it will get us somewhere, but it's still in the beginning. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I have a quick question. Question really, really quick. Um, in a slide of Ubuntu hours, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by Git while blogging? What What is that? I, I don't guess. remember. Wait. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a trivial. I can ask you. Oh, I, I forgot to about that slide. Let me see. Oh, I, I probably saw that one, right? Yeah. Uh, in the lower left hand side, Git while blogging. What does that mean? Uh, Git while blogging. Okay. Uh, um, I think these were two sessions we had about uh, blogging with uh, Hugo uh, and managing the, the sites using Git. I, I wasn't at these sessions, but I think it was that. Yeah, clear. Uh, teaching people how to use Git <laughs> by blogging. Uh, hi, Lina from Colombia. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Colombia, Colombia. Um, I don't have the answers for the problems. We have the same the same problems. Uh, we have uh, not enough women. We have uh, lack of leadership. And uh, but what I want to ask you is what uh, Portuguese team have tried to overcome that, just to learn <laughs> what yeah. not to. Do. So uh, there are a few groups in Portugal, some communities that uh, try to promote. Uh, tech with women. And uh, we have had a few uh, events with them, uh, some social events, some uh, technical events. Uh, not many, I have to say. We also try to be as friendly as we can to all the women that appear in our group. And uh, some of them have become uh, uh, important within our community, uh, not leaders, unfortunately because that would be great, because it, it would show the other women that uh, uh, they belong there uh, as much as any of the other. Um, 
but uh, that that's uh, what we did. We just tried to be as uh, nice to as possible to to not only to women but to, to all groups, uh, and to include them uh, to take in consideration their needs. Uh, uh, also, uh, while moderating our own community, uh, we have had a few, one or two otherwise problems uh, with some people were, that were not uh, uh, being uh, careful with what they were saying, and we, we we moderated the community in a way that allowed them to to feel safe and secure in, within our community. But uh, yeah, we I need I think we need more uh, than this, and I don't think we have done enough. Obviously, we did not done enough because otherwise we had we, we, we had the results to show, and uh, uh, yeah, we need more. So if you have ideas, please. <laughs> we are thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Alex. I also belong to the Colombian community. Uh, how does it work? It's, are you hearing? Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, I have seen some things, and when I saw this. Uh, converting users to contributors. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing in the last, no, no, 10 years that people are, I mean, the way of, first of communicating and the way they consume this cold content is different. Like people are not willing more to write a page of things. They probably will make a video, like YouTube video yeah. or a, even a TikTok thingy, mm -hmm. talking about Linux, Ubuntu or whatever. And also I see we have a Telegram group for support people tend to get or to need the solutions really fast. Like, I need this today, right now. Before yeah. it was like we, ha we were using um, mailing list 10 years ago, yeah. and you have to wait for days until you do it or somebody kind of help you, but yeah. and the, the answers were coming in, a, let's say for us, Colombia to Spain, sometimes you can't get a uh, response from Spain, you have to wait because of the time, things like this. But now people tend to, 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 yeah. to be used to fastest. Yeah, the attention economy also influenced the, the support economy. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's an issue. We also um, have that issue. We have less of it because our group, Telegram group, is quite active. And because sometimes we say, oh, uh, in this group, uh, we are not being able to respond to your question. But there is a, an English group. If you can speak English, you can go there and you can ask. And the, that group also works great. At least for me, it has worked mm -hmm. great. Uh, so. Yeah. And there is also one thing that I I see also here, and I see uh, when I talk, to, when I do like what you call this um, evangelization of the Linux on Ubuntu in general, uh, the the entrance, there are a, a higher entrance barrier for, for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe we can talk uh, yeah. in the old way. Uh, thank you. Uh, if anyone of you.